Everything is completely standalone. Turn it on, find it on your phone, connect and play. Welcome to the Continuum Lab. It's been a while since I posted anything here on the channel, not for a lack of stuff to talk about, but rather just because I've been super busy. Of course, as always, I've been making instruments. And because you already saw it in the thumbnail and the title of this video, let's just get it out of the way. Yes, the upcoming Continuum Lab Instrument Kit version 3 will be wireless. Or at least it will include a wireless option which connects to your phone over Bluetooth. And that's what this video is about. But of course, there's also a whole lot of other stuff going on in the Continuum Lab, all of which I will try to catch you up on in the next few videos. So let's go. My name is Jeppe. I'm a musician turned maker and now I use electronics, coding, 3D printing and lots of cardboard to make MIDI controllers and musical instruments. You can buy the electronics I use over at ContinuumLab.com. Link in the description. Now the Continuum Lab Instrument Kit version 2 was based on the Teensy 3.2 microcontroller. And I'm not giving up on that board completely. I mean, it is pretty awesome with its onboard capacitive sensors, native USB MIDI, and of course the fact that it has an actual DAC for high quality audio output. But the thing is, it is quite expensive. And so I've been working on other ways to solve the needs of the click. Like for example, the MPR121 capacitive sensor, which I've been working with for a while now and which I will cover in more detail in an upcoming video. But of course, the main topic of this video is DIY wireless MIDI. Now, there are some industry solutions for this that you can buy, like uh, Yamaha's BT-01 or Roland's WM-1 or of course the WIDI Master, plus a few more. But I want the Click 3 to be cheaper than earlier versions, not more expensive. And so I'm not going to include a 40 or 50 euro MIDI dongle on top of the other necessary instrument electronics. Another problem that all of these gadgets share is that they all use actual classic MIDI plugs. And that's not at all what I want. I want something that will connect directly to my phone without having to use some kind of dongle or cable or whatever. On the other hand, what I have learned from looking at these and other devices is that it seems like the way to make wireless MIDI is by using something called Bluetooth Low Energy, also known as BLE. And it turns out that there are actually microcontrollers that can do this. So after lots of research, I've settled on the famous ESP32. Specifically, I'm using a board designed by Wemos called the Lowland 32 Lite, which does BLE, regular Bluetooth, uh, Wi-Fi, and it can even be programmed using the Arduino IDE. And to top off all of that awesomeness, it can be powered by a single cell LiPo or lithium ion battery, and there's even a charging circuit on board, which is powered through the same micro USB plug that you use to program the board. Oh yeah, and it's quite cheap. So of course, I got a few of these boards and started experimenting. First, I made an improvised breakout board for connecting capacitor sensors and buttons and all of that stuff. And then once I figured out how it all works together, I then designed and ordered this more professional looking board. And this is what's inside the new click. There's the Lowland 32 plus the breakout board. There are capacitive sensor boards. You can put up to four of them in here for a maximum of 48 keys. There's a small LiPo battery and very little else. Well, there's also an external LED which mimics the signal from the onboard LED and shows uh, if we're calibrating or trying to connect to a phone or if we're powered on or off. And then there's the calibration button, of course, which all of the click instruments have. Plus, I've included a power switch which connects to the enable pin on the microcontroller so you don't drain the battery when you're not using your instrument. Everything is completely standalone. Turn it on, find it on your phone, connect and play. Of course, you'll also need to install a synthesizer app on your phone or tablet. I'm currently using this free one. Funny story, ever since I first started publishing DIY MIDI instrument videos and then selling the click, one of the most repeated comments that I've gotten has been some version of, does it connect to my phone? And up until now, my reply has always been some version of, 
No, it doesn't. And why would it? Just get a real computer, you damned Gen Z nerd. But now I see the error of my ways. This setup is awesome and I love it. Would I use it professionally? No, probably not. The Openhorn MIDI system, which is my own professional electronic wind instrument, apart from outputting MIDI over USB, also has a powerful onboard synth. And that setup uh, ensures complete reliability, no external software needed, and of course, zero latency. And that brings us to the unavoidable questions from the geeks in the audience. What about the connection? Does it work with Android? And most importantly, how's the latency? Well, it's actually pretty good with a couple of disclaimers. Number one, I don't really have a good way of measuring absolute latency between the instrument and my phone. I mean, look at this video, for example. At 25 frames per second, there's 40 milliseconds between each frame. So that's totally useless for measuring instrument latency, which starts to become noticeable at much shorter time spans. Now, I guess I could make some super elaborate measurement setup to document the exact latency, but honestly, right now, I just can't be bothered. Instead, what I do is I just play the instrument and see how it feels, which is not as ridiculous as it sounds. I mean, I am a professional musician with more than 25 years experience playing acoustic instruments. So once latency goes past a certain point, I just feel super uncomfortable, which is when the latency is too high. Simple as that. The second disclaimer is that the quality of the Bluetooth link actually depends more on the phone you're using than on the ESP32 chip itself. For example, it's common knowledge that Android phones tend to have more Bluetooth latency than iPhones. Now, I'm on a pretty normal, sort of cheapo Xiaomi Android phone, so if I'm able to get decent latency on this, then it should work just as well or better on most other phones and tablets. But it actually goes beyond brands and is affected by the specific setup of the phone that you're using. Like, for example, each time I connect an instrument to my phone, I get slightly different results. Now, mostly the uh, latency is within acceptable limits, but sometimes I get crazy results like this. Now, what I've discovered is that this is mostly caused by having too many apps running in the background. Pretty obvious, I guess, but it still took me a while to figure it out. So what I do is, before I use my phone for music, I simply shut everything else down, like this, and then I open up my synth app, connect, and play. And that's the basic setup for the Click 3 wireless MIDI. Now, of course, there's a lot more to it. If you want to know more about the specific code or the libraries that you'll need to set up your own DIY wireless MIDI controller using the ESP32, then let me know in the comments. In the next couple of videos, I'll be talking about other possible features of the Click 3, especially about my investigations into PWM-based synths on the Arduino. So take care until then, and I'll see you in the continuum.